fellow teachers, welcome to another episode on writing. In our previous episode, we learned about rhetorical patterns of developing a paragraph. For today's lesson, we are going to discuss the reading-writing connection, making an outline and writing a paragraph from an outline. Who was it who said, good readers make good writers? Is there really a connection between reading and writing? Many believe that reading is a pre-writing activity. It is one way of generating ideas about a topic. This means that a person who has read enough about a topic may be more than ready to write something about it. She or he may write a personal response to what has been read, such as a review, a suggestion, a commentary or reaction, or a summary. Likewise, a person who is fond of reading may pick a good expression, a well-turned phrase, or a new idiomatic expression that will help him communicate better. It is not surprising that a good piece of writing a person had read may provide him or her a useful model of writing. A well-written text may serve as a good example on how to start a composition, how to elaborate on ideas about it, and how to conclude it. What follows is an example of a good piece of writing from Bertrand Russell. Reading his piece will help readers see how a text is presented and organized. As we read it through, Please refer to the TSM or teaching support material for the full text so that you can be guided accordingly in the succeeding discussion. Three passions, simple but overwhelmingly strong, have governed my life. The longing for love, the search for knowledge, and unbearable pity for mankind. These passions like great winds, have blown me hither and thither in a wayward course over a deep ocean of anguish reaching to the very verge of despair. I have sought love, first, because it brings ecstasy. Ecstasy so great that I would often have sacrificed all the rest of my life for a few hours of this joy. I have sought it Next, because it relieves loneliness. That terrible loneliness in which one shivering consciousness looks over the rim of the world into the cold, unfathomable, lifeless abyss. I have sought it, finally, because of the union of love I have seen, the prefiguring vision of the heaven that saints and poets have imagined. This is what I sought and thought it may seem too good for human life. This is what, at last, I have found. With equal passion, I have sought knowledge. I have wished to understand the hearts of men. I have wished to know why the stars shine, and I have tried to apprehend the Pythagorean power by which number holds sway above the flux. A little of this, but not much, I have achieved love and knowledge so far as they were possible led upward to the heavens but always pity brought me back to earth echoes of cries or pain reverberate in my heart children in famine victims tortured by oppressors helpless old people a burden to their sons and the whole world of loneliness poverty and pain make a mockery of what human life should be. I long to alleviate the evil, but I cannot, and I too suffer. This has been my life. I have found it worth living, and would gladly live it again, if the chance were offered me. That was a beautiful piece, wasn't it? But were you able to identify the thesis or the controlling idea of the story? Think about it while we pause for this short break and we'll answer it when we return.